Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about um, link performance in c .net. So we're going to be looking specifically at some link methods and uh, like some simple examples when where we're going to show some link composition and why that composition is not the greatest thing that you can have, why it's uh, incorrectly done and we're going to be looking at how to improve the performance of that link um, composition. Okay, so uh, before we begin, um, one simple thing. Uh, so this video was actually, um, I, I decided to make this video because uh, there's an article in Medium that popped up in my like inbox today that basically states that um, there's no performance like penalties in using link at all. So it, the article is called, is using link in c -sharp bad for performance? And the punchline is, no, it isn't. And I went like to Twitter and just said, well, I just don't agree with this because there's all sorts of these problems that this article just not, just doesn't really address. So it's, it's, it's a short article a couple of minutes of read and it just like looks at three different method types and uh, there's not a lot of composition here really, um, which makes link actually very slow when you think about this because link tries to do context-free composition and context-free composition has a perf like a performance cap on it, but still link does not utilize the performance correctly so that that still, that, you know, context-free performance can be better. But let's actually uh, switch to uh, the types of performance problems. So there's three, so there's allocations, it's, there's PU pauses, and there's just wrong algorithms. So in terms of allocations, it uh, it largely depends when, where do we allocate? So a stack and a heap are gonna have like completely different performance characteristics. On garbage collected languages, allocating a lot of small stuff um, on the heap is a problem. You want to avoid that as much as possible. Stack is even more um, friendly in these sort of languages. So CPU pauses, uh, there's like branch elimination, there's uh, instruction level dependency, there's data races, data hazards, and stuff like that. And wrong algorithms are just wrong algorithms, so there's probably a way to make them faster. All right, so let's jump into <coughs> some code and what we see here is a method that I've implemented ahead of time. It's called generate list. Uh, it will simply generate a list of a given size and it will just fill out uh, this with the index i. And that's it. So let's say that we wanted to implement a method called find uh, greater than, right? Let's just do find. Uh, it's going to be enumerable and that's going to be called list. And let's say that we want to find a specific item that's greater than a value of that item, of that value here, right? So um, let's do a link method. So let's return list where, uh, not queryable, uh, where x is greater than item. Then we're going to do first or default and just we're going to return. That's it. Okay, so how do we call this method? So we have to generate the list first. So let's define uh, generate list. Um, let's pick a sensible size. So let's do something like that. That should be enough. Let's go for the size. Let's find an item. Uh, let's find the last item. <coughs> just so we have enough stuff to do. And then just let's return the result. Okay. So I've written a small utility library to be able to measure the stuff quickly. It mimics certain operations of benchmark.net, but benchmark.net is obviously more robust. But um, the downside is it's much more slower. So what we're going to do now is we're trying to measure stuff quickly and this goes through a warm-up phase and an execution phase so the results should be good enough for now but at the end I'm going to show you the results of a full benchmark.net run using these methods here okay 
So moving on, um, let's measure the performance of this function. Let's just call it, let's just run it. <coughs> Took eight milliseconds, pretty good. All right, we, we don't have a reference, but well, it's eight milliseconds. But <coughs> I can already tell you that there's a problem here with this method and with this method as well. Um, it's hidden allocations and boxing. Well, boxing is, is, a, is a kind of hidden allocation, depends how you can, but it is. Okay, so what happens here really? So what we have here is we have the where method, we're, we're, we're gonna pass a lambda, and that lambda is gonna get its arguments from the outside context. So that has to be somehow exposed to that lambda at execution time. So that would generate a class with a public field called item. So item is effectively boxed. All right, so that whole lambda uh, with that display class will land on the heap. This is redundant because when we filter this, there's no need really to call this method. This could be optimized away. Uh, we could actually do uh, this reversed. So we could just have list first or default and pass our lambda in this function here, and that would be okay. But it's just to show you that this this is not what people mostly do because um, either they don't know or they forget uh, because link allows us to chain methods so easily that we forget that we can do uh, the same operation using just one uh, operation instead of like a couple of operations. So I've, I've seen this all the time. It's a bug. Uh, it's something that we can fix, but people make this mistake all the time. So that's a problem. And what's the third problem? Well, as it turns out, we don't have any concrete type information here. So we just know that we have a I enumerable, um, same here. So what's gonna happen here is when we call the where on I enumerable, we're gonna act, we're gonna allocate stuff on the heap, and the thing that we're gonna allocate on the heap is I enumerator. And why is that? Because the enumerator of the list is a struct. So that enumerator here, this is a struct, and it's using this interface here. So what's going to happen is we're going to, we don't have enough type information to determine that we don't need to allocate that on the heap. So uh, yeah, so we're going to allocate that on the heap instead of a stack. So already we have a lot of allocations here. So this is going to do a display class. This is going to do a display class. This is going to do closure. Closure is going to create another display class. Um, this will allocate on the heap. This will allocate on the heap. And this will do a display class, but we don't really care. So let's verify that it's what's actually happening. So, <coughs> sorry, um, let's uh, fire up a debugger called WinDBG. If you haven't been exposed to WinDBG, it's a really good application to be able to um, debug stuff, uh, do performance analysis, do dump analysis, and do things like that, that we're doing now. So let's, uh, we loaded up our process. Uh, it already completed. So let's see what's on the heap. So we're going to dump the heap and we're going to look for stuff. So we're going to look for display classes. And did we, um, so we have a display class here. Um, what we should have is our function, which we have here as well. And we have our iterators. We have two iterators of lists. So, um, yeah, that's a problem. That's going to be a problem. Because let's look up our display class. So our display class uh, has two instances uh, and it has a int32 field, which is uh, the captured field of our value. So that's, like I said, that's, that's going to be a problem. 
do we have we should have a one additional display class for um, the utils library and maybe that's the other one yeah never mind but as you can see we have a display class and it's not really something that we would like um, oh yeah so this is our display class so it's something that that we don't actually want when we're trying to do performance because although it still runs fast because it takes what eight milliseconds the problem is that when we have a moving system uh, like a server composed of a lot of moving stuff this contributes to an overall down downgrade of performance why is that? Because it allocates a lot of small stuff on the heap and these will get destroyed almost immediately after you're done with the method. So they're going to get garbage collected. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the memory pressure and the garbage collection will uh, happen more frequently than it used to be. And probably we're going to trigger at some point more full garbage collections, which is like a stop the world algorithm. And uh, this stop the world will stop all of the threads and we're just going to pause because normal garbage collection happens um, asynchronously, but still it takes time. So this is going to slow us down as an entire system even. So although you have good performance uh, characteristics here, so uh, as you can see it took 8 milliseconds, that doesn't actually matter because um, we're slowing down the entire system especially garbage collected ones uh, are really, um, you know, if we're, if we're doing .NET, which is garbage, a garbage collected platform, then it's even a bigger problem, I would say. Okay, so how do we deal with the problem? So we know that we have this method called find here, we have this generate list, and um, already I told you that uh, if we're going to do like if we're gonna operate on more concrete types we're not gonna allocate stuff on the heap especially iterators but we can optimize this as well so we can just settle for a simple loop for example where we would do from i to list count and we would do i plus plus and now let's do the same operation where list i is greater than item. If so, then return the list of i. That could be even optimized away because we can cache the list of i in a variable, but that's not really um, default of int. So we could we could gain a bunch of, uh, like a, a couple CPU cycles here as well, but we don't care, it's probably going to be faster anyways. So this is the optimized version, so this is the refactor that we did, and let's measure the performance now, and then let's fire up the debugger again, and see how we perform. So it now takes 3 milliseconds instead of 8. So that's pretty good, right? So it, it, it never takes 8 milliseconds. That's good. It's 3 to 4 to 5 probably. Okay. <coughs> so let's fire up the debugger and see how our allocations do, how we're doing uh, on the heap here. Okay. Let's go. Let's break. Let's... No, 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 no. Let's dump the heap. And do we have a display class? Yes, we do, but it's it's our display class from the measurements. So that's not that display class that we're after. Do we have some like function delegates? No. Do we have iterators? No, we don't. So as you can see, we already uh, shaved off almost a couple of hundred bytes here because these iterators were pretty heavy, if I, if I recall correctly. So, um, first of all, that's good. We shaved off some memory. And second of all, um, all of these things are allocated on the stack right now. So there's no need to allocate them on a heap. Uh, there's now garbage collection happening, probably, right? So the overall state of the system is better. And 
you know, we're still faster by a lot. So how much faster are we? Let's now look at um, the benchmark.net uh, measurement. So I took these two methods. I just run them through a benchmark.net uh, with a big enough size of the list. And this is what happened. So hopefully you can see this, this metric here. The font is OK. So the link uh, version is how much slower? It's nine times slower, something like that. It's less stable, so the standard deviation is all over the place, and that's obvious because we're allocating and deallocating stuff from the heap. Um, that's why the error rate is going to be bigger, um, and everything is worse in terms of performance. And uh, yeah, and that's and when we when we're going to add the, on top that the overall state of the system is better when we're just doing less allocations, then hopefully you can see the benefits. So is there a way to is there a way to make the link method? Because we want the, that composition, right? <coughs> Sorry. So is there a way to have a link based composition but do less allocations? Yes there is. So we can, what we can do here is we can change this to lists. Uh, we can um, not capture this lambda um, in this way. Uh, we can remove this where we can do the first or default. It's still going to be slower. It's still going to do some allocations, but it at least going to be doing less allocations. But if we wanted to solve the problem completely, what we would have to do is we would have to um, re-implement some of these methods under the hood. So in a way, create our own link interface. And it, this is doable. You can even override the current link interface. So that's not a problem. And yeah, do that. And uh, if we wanted to go even faster, we could create something that uh, I like to call a context specific composition chain, where if we're doing a bunch of operations, so first of all, we'll um, interested in stuff that's greater than a value, then uh, we're going to do like an aggregate. Then that aggregate is going to be put into a object. And then it's going to be created as a list, for example. So it's like four or five operations chained together. Then uh, <clears throat> what we can do here is we can pass a context that uh, we're doing this chain of operations and pass these chains of uh, th this big chain of operations into sort of like an optimizer of sorts, which will try to figure out using like plain old loops here as we have. Uh, it will try to figure out how to solve the problem using um, the minimum amount of operations and for loops and stuff like that. It's a difficult thing to do, but it's possible. So that's one of the really interesting ways how you can redefine link and uh, do. And yeah, it, it's going to be very performant. There's there's other projects that try to do um, like context in the uh, independent link. Uh, so like. They're trying to do plain link, but they're going to be using stuff under the hood like pointers, memory spans, uh, plain spans, and like new performance uh, features of .NET to re-implement link. And that's fast. And they're going to introduce a different sort of methods that try to capture context better. And uh, there, it's like the, there's a project called Fastlink. So you can, you can check that as well. So I'm going to put some links into the description of the video. So that's that's all for now. Um, if you found this uh, useful, leave a like, leave a thumbs up, and uh, I'm going to be making more videos about performance because I'm not done with link yet. I'm not done with boxing yet. So there's there's a lot of things to talk about. So that's for now. Thanks and bye.